Hello and welcome to these Words of Wisdom talks here on Shalom World. These talks are given to us during our Lenten journey to help us really to draw closer to Jesus in this time. And all under the title of He Conquered. My name is Father Michael Kane. I'm the parish priest of St Augustine's Church in Coatbridge, Scotland. And the theme of today's talk is He Conquered Unforgiveness. Let me begin with a, a true story. Some years ago, a lady from a different parish, she came to see me to share with me something that was really troubling her heart. And she began by telling me her whole life story. She told me that she was fortunate enough to grow up in a wonderful family with great parents and an amazing Catholic faith. And she grew up alongside her sister and the two of them were inseparable. They loved each other very, very much. And they grew up always doing everything together. They shared everything together. Even when they grew up to become adults, they raised their children and their families together. But somewhere along the way, they grew apart. Something happened in the family and they stopped talking. And over time, they lost contact completely. And that happened year after year. So that when she came to speak to me, 20 years had passed before she had spoken to her sister. There was a lot of hurt in the relationship, a lot of unforgiveness on both sides. And in any case, this lady, she began this journey of healing. She was asking God every day for the courage to be able to forgive, to heal, to restore what was lost, and to move on again with her sister by her side. And eventually, after a long, long period, she built up the courage to reach out and she had to do it through other people to find out where her sister was. So she reached out and at that moment she found out that her sister had died the year before. As you can imagine, it was a, a crushing moment for her. The very moment she was ready to offer the gift of her forgiveness, it was too late. I tell that story because for all of us, it's easy for unforgiveness to set up home in our hearts. In the Gospels these days of Lent, we hear constantly Jesus reaching out to heal people. People, floods of people come to Jesus and they are desperate for him just to touch them. One even comes and says, if even I can touch the hem of his garment, I know that I will be healed. And so over the course of these days, we hear him healing the woman with the hemorrhage. We hear him healing the blind man, the lame, the lepers, all of these incredible physical healings. But constantly in the ministry of Jesus, we see that the outward external healings are accompanied by a deeper inward interior spiritual healing. So, for example, the man who is blind, Jesus restores his physical sight, but what else does he give him? The deeper gift is that he gives him this new sight, the sight of faith. He comes to believe in Jesus. The lepers, they come and Jesus takes away the sores of their leprosy, the physical healing. But of course, there's a much deeper healing takes place because Jesus restores them to their families, to the community, they no longer have to live in the shadows to ring a bell unclean. They can live now in the open as part of the community. 
So always with Jesus, he desires this deeper, deeper healing in each one of us. And certainly he, dire, he desires to conquer the unforgiveness that can live deep within us. Let's look at perhaps the greatest gospel passage that speaks of this type of forgiveness. It's the famous passage of the prodigal son. Let's recap. We all know this passage, but it's good for us to remember again what happens. So we have this father with two sons, and one of the sons comes to him and says, Father, give me the inheritance that would fall to me. And it's quite an offensive thing to say, because really he's saying, give me what I would get if you were dead. But the father complies and he gives to the son his proportion of the inheritance. And the son heads off to a foreign land and he squanders all of his money. He makes lots and lots of big, big mistakes. And eventually the money runs out. And when the money is all gone, reality hits. And he realizes he's far from home He's far from the love of his family. He is all alone in the world. And then he reaches his senses. He says, I'm going to go home to my father, not as a son because I have rejected my father, but I'll go as one of his servants and then at least I'll get some food in my belly. And he comes back to the father and we know what happens. The father welcomes him with open arms. He puts a cloak on his shoulders, a ring on his finger. He restores the dignity that the son thought he had lost. And the father embraces him. He says, this son of mine was dead and has come back to life. And that story, it's depicted so beautifully in that famous painting by Rembrandt, The Return of the Prodigal Son. We see this poor son in rags, his life is a mess. He thinks he's lost everything. He's on his knees, literally. And yet we see the Father who is ready generously to forgive him, to embrace him, and to love him. That image in the Gospel and in that painting, it speaks to us of the love of God, which knows no boundaries. It's a love that is so extravagant in nature. God is always ready to welcome us home as a lost son or daughter and to restore our dignity once again. Nothing is beyond the forgiveness of God. And it's good for us to remember that. You know, when we mess up in life, we sometimes think, goodness, would God forgive me? Yes. If we come to him on our knees and we're sorry, he wants to forgive us. Nothing is beyond the forgiveness of God. So we have this wonderful example in the scriptures of the, the love and the mercy of God our Father. A love and a mercy and a compassion that knows no limits, no boundaries. It's extravagant in nature. And we have this image so that we can imitate it. God wants us to be like that with each other, extravagant, boundless in our forgiving. Remember in the Gospels when Peter comes to Jesus and he says, Lord, how often have I to forgive my brother who offends me? As often as seven times? And remember what Jesus says, he says, not seven, but 77 times. In other words, constantly, whenever it's needed, we have to offer the forgiveness to others. And yet sometimes, you know, we prefer to be the older brother in the passage of the prodigal son. His heart has been hardened. He cannot understand why his father would welcome his wayward son like this. He cannot understand the baffling generosity that he shows. We can be like that. Our hearts can be stubborn. Our hearts can be hardened, so much so that we don't want to forgive. We say it's unjust to forgive. We find any reason we can to say, no, I will not forgive and heal and restore. Maybe we say, I'm the victim in this. And so we don't offer that precious gift to others. 
we're invited not to be like that, but to be extravagant in our forgiving, our mercy and our compassion. And here is the strange thing about forgiveness. We have been conditioned to believe that forgiveness works like this. I am the giver and the other person is the receiver. So I am giving the gift to another person. And yet it's not really like that actually. Because forgiveness is first and foremost a self-gift. It is a gift to myself when I forgive another person. Because when I forgive somebody else, I'm protecting myself from having this hardened heart. I'm protecting myself from bitterness and anger and resentment and all those things that so easily can take root within and, and set up home within. So when I forgive another person, primarily I'm gifting to myself. It's very much a secondary thing that the other person is also receiving a gift. Now I read somewhere lately a, a fantastic expression and it's so true, it says, to forgive is to set a prisoner free and to discover that prisoner was me. It is so true. When we forgive another person, we, we take off the shackles of unforgiveness that, that lives within us. It's a gift to ourselves. It's a gift of healing to ourselves more than, more than anything else. And we know that when we look at the prodigal son. When we look at that passage, we have the father and the son. When the father forgives the son, who receives more? Of course, the son receives the love of his father again. But the father receives so much, so much more. He gets his son back. As he said, my son was dead and he has come back to life. So he is the recipient, first and foremost, of that gift of forgiveness. When we look into our own lives, it's good for us every once in a while to take back some of the layers within us and to see what are the things that live in there. What do I need Jesus to conquer within me? And today, let's ask that important question, does some unforgiveness live within me right now, today? And if it is there, who is it that I need to forgive? Not tomorrow or two weeks time or whenever, but who do I need to forgive today? and to heal what is broken today? Is this something that I've been carrying for a short time or for a long, long time? Perhaps maybe even over many, many years. Is it perhaps a family member who has hurt me by their words or their actions? Is it a friend? Is it somebody else? How much energy have I spent over this time building up grudges and resentments and anger and pain? Have I even resolved myself to this idea that this will never change, this can never be healed? Or am I willing to have the courage to say, I want to fix this today? I am going to be the one who reaches out with a hand of friendship to forgive and to heal. If there is somebody in your life today who is in need of forgiveness, please do not put it off to tomorrow because you know, tomorrow might never come. This is a quest for today. So that might mean writing a letter, picking up the phone, 
going to visit somebody who has hurt me. And lay your life before them and say, look, I am, I am willing to forgive and to move on. No matter what's happened in the past, I am willing to heal what is broken in our relationship. So today is a day to really examine our lives and to protect our hearts and our souls from all the bitterness and unforgiveness and anger that so easily can live within us. And let's remember the greatest example we have of one who forgives lavishly, extravagantly, is Jesus. And we are his disciples, we are called to forgive without condition. You know, Jesus asks many things of us, many things of us. Perhaps the most difficult thing he asks us to do is to forgive, especially when we have been so deeply, deeply hurt. But Jesus is the one who offers us the perfect example of what forgiveness looks like. Remember on the cross, in pain, in agony, some of his final words, he forgives those who put him there. He forgives those who nailed him to the cross. Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. If ever we need an example of boundless forgiveness, compassion that knows no end, look to Jesus on the cross. And even if you're hurting and sore from past ills, even if you're wounded by somebody, be sure to offer the gift of your forgiveness this Easter. Begin a new chapter with those that you have lost for some reason. So let's turn to Jesus now. He is the minister of all grace. He is the one who will give us the courage that we need to be able to reach out. So Jesus, you have shown us the perfect example of forgiveness. In your Gospels, you give us other examples of what it looks like to welcome home a prodigal son. Touch our hearts today, Jesus. Soften our hearts by your grace and your love. And give us the wisdom and the courage to reach out to those who have hurt and offended us. Give us the courage to heal what is lost, to restore what is broken. Help us, Jesus, this Easter to imitate your way of loving without conditions, without boundaries. Let me return to the lady I mentioned at the start of the talk. Her journey to forgiveness took a long, long time. She had to walk a, a long journey to have the courage to be able to say, I forgive. And yet in her case, the greatest sadness, the crushing defeat was that she offered it too late. What she would have given to have been able to turn the clock back and to be able to reach out to her sister who deep down she loved, and yet, she couldn't. She waited and she waited, and then she no longer had her sister. Today, let's learn from her. And if there is somebody in our life today who needs our forgiveness, don't wait till tomorrow. Don't say, well, in four weeks' time or in six months' time, I'll maybe do this. Jesus is asking you today to have the courage at this moment to be brave enough to say, I forgive you. He wants us to imitate that beautiful image of Rembrandt where we embrace the one who has hurt us, where we restore what has been lost in our life. Let's ask Jesus this Easter 
to conquer the unforgiveness that so easily clings to us. It's very human, it's very human to say, I, I, I won't forgive. It's very human to be stubborn and say, I let the other person ask for forgiveness first. It's divine. It's a grace from God when we say, no, I forgive you, not only through my lips, through my words, but I forgive you from my heart. This is what Jesus is asking us to do today. Very soon, this Good Friday, we'll all approach the crucifix, the cross, and we'll venerate the cross. But as we kiss that cross of Jesus, remember the words that he spoke as he hung upon the cross. Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. And let's make his words our words this Easter. Thank you.